Hey everybody, my name is Steve Hammer, and I just wanted to take a minute to thank you all for checking out this application video. I am interested in becoming one of the lead facilitators for this summer's Design the Future program that's going to be offered here in Louisville, Kentucky. I think it's going to be an excellent, excellent opportunity for the kids um, in the community and from elsewhere that are going to come in for that program. Now, before you guys get a little bit further into the application, I do just want to let you all know up front that from the end of our school year, which is um, towards the end of May, I will be out of the country with a group of my students. We have a current partnership with the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and we're going to be in the Costa Rican rainforest with some of their professors doing some research. Uh, I will be back in the country on June the 4th, but I know that that cuts into the first session just a little bit. So hopefully you're not going to hit the stop button right now, and um, we can maybe give this thing a go. So give you guys a little bit of information about me. As you guys can see, I'm sitting in my lab right now. I've got a couple of the machines sitting here behind me. Um, we've got several great machines that we use on a regular basis and that I am very, very familiar with. We do a lot of 3D printing. Uh, we do a lot of testing of, of projects in here. Um, we've got a fantastic laser cutter that we use. Um, we've got a wind tunnel and we've also got um, a flood table so that we can do some um, hydro based testing on designs and projects as well. I learned about design thinking while in Davos, Switzerland. I took a group of students abroad to a summit on education as a human right. During our summit in Davos, we went through a three-day activity led by a group from Stanford's D School. They led us through a pseudo redesign of education using design thinking. Since that one exercise, design thinking has been a central problem solving approach and theme in all of my classes. As you'll see in this next clip, a group of my students used design thinking to reimagine prosthetics. They used human muscle input to map and control mechanical devices. They questioned what life would be like with additional fingers or thumbs and designed and printed devices to test their theories. Now, this particular clip is going to showcase the early stages of our testing. So what we've got here is instead of actually controlling a mechanical device, we hacked the devices and took our muscle input from one person and actually used them to control the muscles of another person. So we were playing around with the technology and then later used that to control little servo motors that would pull a prosthetic finger or thumb. So, are you ready? Okay, so with the prosthetics project, we are going to use muscle input to take control of a small motor, similar to this, that's going to be attached to a prosthetic that will, hand me that one, it's right there, that will actually pull a cord and simulate how an actual finger can bend. And so what we're doing right now is basically simulating how instead of having it hooked up to the motor, the electrical impulse can also take control of nerves. And so if you've got it hooked up right, I'm going to take control of your hand. All right? So as long as we're on green here, so you're hooked up, wiggle your fingers. Can you wiggle your fingers? A little bit? but not too much. Let me see, lift your arm up. Yeah, you're pretty much in the right spot, so wiggle your fingers. Some people have a little bit more control, like ability to be controlled than others. So, as soon as I tense up and the lights go red, that's sending a signal to your nerves. That's so weird, right? That's so weird. That finger points every time. Yeah, your index finger doesn't get controlled. It's these two fingers, your, your ring and little finger that the ulnar nerve kind of comes up and splits into. So if I just control those, oh if, I make, if I flex a little bit harder. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> During the summer of 2016, I had an amazing opportunity to work with a group of my students over the course of the summer. Our school got accepted to participate in the Red Bull Flugtag. And this was pretty amazing because during this time, I got to use some tools and develop some skills that I had never before used. And I got to help and teach students to use those exact same skills. So over the course of the summer, we worked about 16 hours a week. And come Flugtag time, we actually brought home the People's Choice Award for the school, which was absolutely incredible. In today's education, we continue to place too much emphasis on a student's ability to regurgitate knowledge. 
This type of lecture and test teaching stifles a student's creative process, thereby hindering their ability to think critically and solve open-ended questions. I think Design of the Future offers an amazing solution to these problems, and for that reason, I would be honored to help lead Design of the Future in Louisville, Kentucky this summer.